Well, I'm Jared, and uh, I'm Mr. Alexander, and we're the Black Lips. Well, um, it's like our, a new band, kind of. Yeah, it's like a completely new band, pretty much. Uh, our drummer left um, amicably, but uh, and so we just went to the studio where we were recording in upstate New York. And Oakley, who's our current drummer now, just happened to have moved to the vicinity. Like, I think he had just turned on his phone, like the, you know, the kind of the like a home phone. And his first call he got was from Cole, and he just drove over to the farm we were at and joined. And Jeff, we've been kind of going between uh, our guitarists like the past. We've had like a lot of our friends filling in, but we decided the other night that Jeff's our permanent guy. We've just um, we've known him for years. He's he's actually from well, he's from Edmonton, but he lived in Toronto for a long time. He was in a band called the Demons Claws. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Yeah, I mean, if we were like a baseball team and you were like a first dra- round draft pick, he would have been like our first round draft pick for guitarist. Because he's like doing similar kind of mindset thing that we're doing. And he's one of our best buddies. Uh, Zumi, she's she's a permanent member now, but she had been playing with us like off and on. We kind of kidnapped her. We took her from this other band that broke up. There's a lot of inner band stuff. It's kind of incestual once you get in this, this you know, small scene. Things are getting a little stagnant. We've been playing for like almost 20 years, so it kind of feels good to have some new blood. I was kind of, the sh- she's just like us. I mean, it's, yeah. Of course, I was like, we better like, you know, hold our tongue and not be like all foul and stuff, but she's kind of like worse than us sometimes with the foul mouth, so. I think since like high school, like since you played in like a jazz band or like something like that. Yeah, we had one, we had an accordion once from this girl. But it was just like, you know, a session oh, yeah. kind of thing. But we never had like a female energy. It definitely changes energy. I think it's good for us. Yeah, I think it, you're to, it's good to be in touch with your feminine side. Well, we're not super macho as it is anyways, but, it, you know, it's like a natural balance yeah. or something. It kind of stops us from like oozing too much machismo. Oh, we actually met him through when we were doing our record with Mark Ronson. They're like, they're like best buds. And Sean came in to do like play theremin on some stuff. And then we just had like a bunch of mutual friends and kept in touch over the like just over the years, um, just like like-minded folks. And uh, he decided to give us a shot. He believed in us, and so we went and made a record with him. Yeah, I used his Fender bassman that he used. I think in the Beatles for a little bit and Plastic Ono Band. So it was a Fender bassman. It was sounding awesome. Like once I played it, I was like, I'm gonna keep playing this kind of just happened yeah we had no idea what we were doing i didn't even know if we had a whole record written when we got up there we just went up there and we were just out there i mean just pretty far from society and that was just us because we could do whatever we wanted there's the only time i've ever been a studio where we lived at the studio and the engineer lived there she could go in anytime you wanted um so that was just us there's plenty of different rooms so it was just jamming and Sean kept saying he wanted us to make a concept record, but I don't think we're smart enough to make a concept record. So, like, our concept was just, like, kind of a shitty concept. Like, there really is. I was hoping people would be, like, think there's, like, a deep meaning to it and come up with their own interpretations, but there's no, there's nothing that ties any of the songs together or, or no theme. Uh, you can't play punk forever. Uh, our music's always, it's, I think it's a way to age gracefully. Um, I mean, we're still going to, it, when we do our country songs, we're, we're pulling out a few tonight. They still still kind of sound just like our songs. We've done all our stuff's based kind of in country and blues. Yeah, and stuff we, we're anyways. already kind of twangy anyway, so it's not that far of a stretch for us. And we want to get it out soon because I notice all these people are doing country records now, like uh, Justin Timberlake. I haven't heard it. Um, who else went country? My well, father John Misty, I think, did like some revision stuff in country, so I think it's getting kind of. Trendy, we gotta beat the kids to the curve. I will say some of this stuff is a little harder if I'm like a music theory, because we're just used to playing like three chord stuff, and I'm realizing sometimes it's like the guitar work and the bass lines can be like kind of yeah, more kind sub- of, sophisticated than we thought, and it's like I get I get confused sometimes. It's but. almost so simple it becomes difficult. Yeah. So some, I'm, I'm, I'm having to learn to play a little bit different. Yeah, we call it like deceptively simple. Yeah, Oakley, our drummer, is he's like their manager, and they're like his protege, so... They all live with Oakley, and he puts them to work on his farm in upstate New York. If we were like a baseball team, they'd be like our farm club. 
Like, yeah, like Oakley was working on some demos. AAA. He was working on some demos, and they helped him like come up with some parts, you know, for like the demo. If somebody gets those, injured. Those are, those are good kids. Those boys. They were all pretty fun and exciting. Um, Saul, actually, we were supposed to do our next tour with Insecure Men, but uh, Saul dropped out. I haven't spoken to him yet. I don't know why. I hope it's a legitimate reason. Yeah, the whole thing was exciting. I mean, every time, it's hard to really pick something out because every time we play, it's so exciting. Like, it's almost, it's almost like you get a tolerance to it. So I have to keep, like, things have to get crazier and crazier because now what some people would think is, you know, a wild night or, you know, they'll go crazy on prom night or a wedding or something. That's like a Tuesday for me. They kind of just come naturally. They try not to think about it or be too pre-calculated. For a while, I always wanted to, we were trying to, like, figure out how to break glass in our head. Our old drummer could do it, but I couldn't, I would always just go clunk and hurt my head, so I kind of give up. Yeah, a lot of that stuff happened, like, when we were teenagers and, like, or in our very early 20s. Um, we just want to put on a good live show for people and um, not do anything, you know. Sometimes stuff people are like, oh, they're not crazy anymore, but that's not true either. Sometimes crazy stuff happens, but it's just like spontaneous. Yeah, it's like, are you there every night? No, I'm there every night. That's oh, cool. Hard Rock? Yeah, yeah. That was maybe two songs. That And that was the bet. When they kicked us off stage, I like I wanted to shake the bouncer's hand and thank him because it was like a, it was at a casino and they're playing like, you know, electronic music and then we go on and you could tell everyone no one there wanted to see us it was like a vice party where it was free free drinks and stuff and people were pretty bummed that we were up there so it was they did us a favor oh yeah I mean, we've yeah been, a lot of buck owens yeah, waylon uh, jennings and verlin husky there's a ton of stuff we've been listening to that cocaine and rhinestones podcast for like historical references and tours on the tail but T- t- Tales, Tales in the, the Tour Bus by Mike Judge. Which Johnny Tales- Paycheck. Yeah. Uh, um, Tammy Wynette. Uh, yeah. Bill man, Anderson. Go on yeah. Go on yeah, it goes on. Go on. It's P-trake. such good music. It's just just good, good down home music. Thank you so much. Thank y'all.